in this episode, I absolutely loved Liza Jacob. She is the very first, all right, all right, everyone's part of this history now, the very first audiobook narrator that we've had in the How to Write a Book podcast. Amazing. Um, she reached out to me and she was like, I know you're a writing podcast, but you know, should we connect? And I was like, yes, definitely. You would love to know more about audiobooks. We'd love to know what kind of questions do you ask? Um, how do you start? You know, what do you look for? You know, what are some things that you should look for positively and negatively? Y'all, she was not only super nice, oh my gosh, so lovely, would just love to sit down and have coffee with her, but also her information was so helpful, straight to the point. And I think best of all, she really left like this warm feeling of like, you know, come on over, go ahead, ask me questions. I'm here for you. Um, and I was like, yes, please let me, let me, is there a ticket? Do I need to get in line? <laughs> so she was awesome. Um, she, uh, audio books or audio narrates lots of different uh, types of genres, which we'll dive into the episode, but you all bookmark this and go ahead, get on her list, start emailing her for some questions and get ready because you know, your book, once it's written next stage is audiobooks. So let's dive in. Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey there, writers. Let's take a beat to talk about a special announcement. So November is your month of transformation. Get a one hour coaching session with me by choosing one of these three options or all three. Option one, join our Patreon for $1, which will support the show. Option two, book a $1 coaching session on coach.me. Option three, leave an Apple podcast review. Send a screenshot to my email and get a coaching spot. You can do all three and get three hours of coaching with me. Find all the links in the show notes. Act fast. This offer is only valid for November to celebrate National Novel Writing Month. Thanks. Hey. Okay. And welcome back to the How to Write a Book podcast. Welcome, Liza Jacob. How are you? I'm great, Matthew. Thanks for having me. Definitely, definitely. And you know what? I didn't actually double check with you. Is that the correct way to say your name? <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have said yes. Liza Jacob. Awesome. Yeah, this is uh, a great opportunity for us here on the How to Write a Book podcast. Um, we've never had an audiobook narrator before. So oh. this is awesome. <laughs> I'm so pleased to be the first on the scene. It's exciting. This is great because um, in the show, you know, we talk about self-publishing, traditional publishing. Um, and one of the things we definitely hit on is getting your books into audiobooks. You know, the importance of it, not just for your book sales, but also to reach different people, new people. Um, it's exciting. So I'm definitely going to have a lot of questions for you. Uh, but first, let's do a little bit of an introduction. And then, of course, I'll throw it over to you. So, Liza Jacob is an audiobook narrator. Um, you do fantasy, romance, cozy mystery, and parenting nonfiction, and some of the samples from your website. You're a Maryland girl transplanted to New Jersey, and you've had a lifelong love of audiobooks. Um, you also have experience in dance, studio art, art history, small boat sailing regattas. I, there's so much. You even have baking, mushroom foraging, and cultivation. I love that. You're like, you know, everything, you know, I don't know. I know everything. Um, but it's, it's always funny because, uh, I feel like narrators will be asked to put their hobbies on their professional websites because if someone's writing a book about mushroom foraging in Maryland, like me, I'm your girl. But, um, it's funny because then when you get to know other narrators, you get to know all their hobbies and you're like, Oh, you forage for mushrooms as well. Like, and I'm bad at it. So like, it's not a specialty. I just like, <laughs> I always, when you go on a guided, um, forage, like, I only pick poisonous mushrooms. <laughs> oh my god! I am so bad at it. But um, but yeah, growing them at home when you buy the kit, that's what I recommend. Way easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely would totally fail. I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. You know what? That one looks nice, but 
I'll just stay over here. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. that's cool. lovely. That's really cool. I didn't know that about the hobby. Thanks. Um, yeah. And then also, let's see, you've trained with Elise Arsenal at the Global Actor. And let mm-hmm. me know if I'm not saying these correctly. That's okay. Trained- Arsenal, yeah. Awesome. Trained with dialect, dialect coach Molly Wetzel. Mm-hmm. Completed the Great Audiobook Adventure Course and the Day in Audio Masterclass with PJ Ochlin. Mm-hmm. Oakland, yeah. Oakland. Thank you. No, no problem. I know none of them are phonetic. Sorry. That's awesome. No, this is great. So what did I miss? Please introduce yourself to us in your own words. No, thank you so much. That was such a lovely introduction. Um, I started out in a different career, like I think a lot of people have. Um, And I was a children's book illustrator and um, I worked in um, both indie and traditional published children's books. Um, And I just got to a point where my schedule was crazy. Um, I had my first daughter and I just needed a break. And um, I was left feeling a little bit burned out, if I'm being honest. And I remember seeing a friend's Facebook post and she was like, I just narrated this audiobook. Come tell me what you think. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have two Audible accounts so I can have extra credits to spend because I listen to them incessantly and you can just do this. And I fell down the rabbit hole of figuring out how she did it and how she would break in because I think I had assumed this was an industry that was like, well, if you worked with this coach in this niche and, you know what I mean, went to this school, yeah, I guess you you might ask someone to do, you know what I mean? Because there are industries that are so tight-knit. They're very hard to get into. Um, and I think it was four and a half years ago, four years ago, I auditioned for my first book and I was like, I won't get it. And that's okay. I'm learning, getting coaching, what have you. And um, she won't pick me. And I'll just ask her politely, like, hey, would you ask the narrator if I could hear their sample and your notes on why she was the best choice? Except I booked it. (laughs) And I was like, oh, no. And so, like, (laughs) pedal to the metal on figuring out, like, a studio space and figuring out, you know, more extensive coaching. And I finished out that book series with that author and then immediately dove full time into um, acting and narration classes, just sort of doing my best to get that graduate's degree in audiobooks. Um, and I, I love it. And I still take class. I think a lot of narrators do still off and on, you know, take a little class to just keep your skills really sharp. Um, but I, I have so much fun. I, I think like a lot of people, my day to day has a lot of chaos, two little kids and a dog and a husband and a this and a that. And then my job is to sit quietly in a room and read novels. <laughs> it's like, I I, there are days where I'm like, what do I have to do today? Oh, yeah, read books. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite. It's it's pretty glorious. I love that. I mean, you know, I feel like sometimes we're like, oh, like, there's no job out there that allows me just to read all day. I'm like, no, yeah, there really is. Yes, <laughs> yes, as you well know. Yes, there yes. is definitely a job where you get to there are multiple jobs multiple where you can jobs. sit yeah and just read exactly. well, you can't count on me for the editing good word I my <laughs> sense of grammar sometimes I write emails I primarily work with independent authors although I have worked with small publishers and um I I second guess my grammar and I have the Grammarly plugin thank goodness because I'm like these people write for a living and they're gonna look at my email <laughs> I'll read your words. I promise I won't write my own. (laughs) (laughs) No worries. That's what I'm here for. I'm definitely the editing nerd. Like, I I just like, I'm like, oh, like you wrote this wrong. Don't worry. Let me get in there. Like put my red pen. I got you. Yeah. (laughs) Good. 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 (laughs) But I still use Grammarly because, you know, I'm like, I'm like, wait, I don't remember. It's like, it's five in the morning. Hold on. Let me just run this through. (laughs) A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, yeah, dreams come true, which I love. So, so you, you started about four years ago and you're already, mm-hmm. I mean, I saw your catalog. You have an extensive catalog. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That's amazing. Definitely. Thanks. Yeah. I, it's, it's so much fun to get to do. And, um, it's been a lot of fun 
to, don't get me wrong, I love working with publishers, um, but it's also a huge amount of fun to work with independent authors. Most of the authors I have worked with, well, that's not true. I'd say about half of the authors I've worked with, I am their first audiobook. So that's always really fun to get to be like, because this is the thing, like, you can't ask me about at a dinner party because I won't stop talking about it. So it's nice when I have an independent author who's like, no, really, I don't know. Please explain. And I'm like, really? Like, let me tell you. Um, because like anything else, if it's something you need to do or have, you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, I need an audio book. What do I do? I don't know where to start. Call me. Even if you listen to my samples and you're like, eh, it's not the right voice for me, nothing brings me greater joy than discussing audiobooks and their creation and the the progress of how your book gets made and what questions you should or shouldn't be asking of your narrator and how to cast someone and how to run through auditions. Like, let me let me guide you. That was a chef's kiss for us audio <laughs> listeners there. That was not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I'm very excited to bring different narrator or sorry, different authors books into narration. And if I've done my job beautifully, like if I've really nailed it that day, which hopefully I did, then you don't hear me. You listen to your book and your listeners listen to the book and they're like, oh, that's, you know, Sarah Lynn and she's in love with Josh. And oh, my gosh, Josh, he sounds so cute. Like, that's what you're hearing. You're not you're like, Liza's making a lot of voices. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So it's it's fun. And I really enjoy the process of um, getting the book, doing my first initial read and prepping the book. And then I'll come back a lot of times if I haven't gotten a lot of direction from my independent author and say, like, hey, just just checking in. Here's what I'm seeing. Or you, you see it the same way? And most of the time we see it the same way. And every once in a while they're like, oh, no, no, he's French. <laughs> and you're like, good, good note. Do not use generic accent. American accent on this character is French. Um, but, you know, then you record and I will send stuff after it's been recorded, edited, mastered, and proofed. Only because every once, like in the very beginning, I would send over like raw files, like just me making mistakes and talking. And I felt bad because it was so time consuming for the author. <laughs> this was like the first project I worked on. I was like, we'll not, we'll not do that again. <laughs> because they're we'll like, learn. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then after they've listened to the audiobook, hit me with some corrections, right? Like everything from, oh, no, that's not how we pronounce this galaxy. And you're like, good, thank you. We'll go back and change to like, hey, in chapter eight, when, you know, our romantic pair gets in a fight, the vibe is playful. And I'm like, oh, I read this as sad. OK, OK, we'll go back. We'll read that part of chapter eight again. Um, and just figuring out that healthy balance between like, we're never going to get through this project. If like I send you raw audio and it takes you forever to read through and, you know, then I go back and you're correcting all the little inter in betweens. But at the same time, I feel like one of the joys of working with independent authors is that I really want their feedback. This is their baby. They have their rights. They're the rights holder. I want them to listen to it and just grin. Like, I want them to feel like, even if you're not an audiobook person, just like ear to ear, I want you to feel like your people are talking. Like, it's, that's my goal. Like, your characters are alive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I'm, I'm a total sucker for audiobooks. I love audiobooks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have my subscription on Audible, you know, yes. every time it's like, you have a new credit. It's like, it feels like a little bit like Christmas. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. And when you see a book you want and there's no credit left, you're like, oh, okay. yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, like, so, like they did like the new, like Audible, like plus catalog. So now there's all yes. this like, yeah. Like, yes, there's stuff, things like, included. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Yes. I have been, I mean, now, like, 
I'm actually like intentionally working out. So because like I know if I'm going to work out, I can listen to more audiobooks. So I've been like really like doing weight lifting and cardio like way to the max just so I could listen to more audiobooks. That's yeah. gotten me to the treadmill. A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're like in that moment of the chapter, you're like, I, I, I'm really tired, but like, I have to know. I can't get off. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I'm off, then I have to go to work. I have to wash the dishes or you can still listen while you wash the dishes. But, you know, I'm yes. like, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> yes. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yes. Oh, so this, this, I mean, already I love, I, I love your, your, your enthusiasm, your passion for your industry. Thank you. Definitely. Um, so one of the first questions I was going to ask to you was, what are some of the common um, questions and mistakes that if those first time authors make when they're searching for an audiobook narrator? Sure, sure. Um, I think a lot of people have questions about process. Where do we start? What do you need from me? Um, and I think that obviously every narrator is different. And so like, there are some narrators who are like, I will read your book. Do not explain. Thank you. But they're few and far between. And there are people who are like, I would like you to hold my hand through this whole book, but they're few and far between. For the most part, I want you to tell me the breakdown on your sort of main characters and any big accents that need to be a certain way. And I'd love a note, me personally, I love a note on tone. If you've got somewhere like the tone of the book is this, and then here it's like we drop it through the floor to like scare you or surprise you or whatever, like give me a heads up. I probably caught it, but it's just good to have that feedback. Um, and certainly anything that's going to be presented in the audition let me know what the lead in was, because I think many times I've seen people give their um, their audition piece is the first chapter. And I think one of the th problems you run into is it doesn't include all of your main characters um, or it doesn't actually encapsulate the vibe. You know what I mean? Like things haven't gotten chaotic yet. Things haven't gotten silly or scary or whatever we're building towards and I feel like there's a lot of goodie in like probably chapter three right there's not so much context you can't give me two sentences to explain where we are but at the same time we're not like really slammed up against the beginning where I'm mostly reading almost what feels like exposition sometimes you know what I mean mm -hmm which won't give the author a great feel for what the narrator will sound like within that moment. Um, I think one of the other things that doesn't hurt, I know it's so tempting to just be like, I put up this posting and then have people come to you. Mm -hmm. And that part is definitely easier than seeking out narrators. But the trouble with doing that is you, depending on the platform, depending on your book, depending, 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 you are probably going to get back an insane amount of auditions, whether you're using Find Away or ACX. Definitely with ACX, you'll get an insane amount. And it, you need to be prepared to listen to the first at least 15 to 30 seconds of like a hundred different auditions, which, mm -hmm. as you can imagine, is draining and time consuming. And it's like trying on a hundred pairs of pants. And by the end, you're like, I don't know, just pants. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm so tired. Um, but it's why I, I know it's more work on the upfront, but seeking out narrators and asking for a um, an audition, totally fine. Particularly if you're asking somewhere between three to five people. I wouldn't ask 25, you know what I mean? Um, but I think it's totally fine to ask a handful of people you're serious about hiring. Um, and I think you can get a pretty good gauge also from the samples on their website, which almost everybody will have. And you can find these narrators. Probably primarily you would find them on ACX and Find Away um, as a beginning independent author. Um, but you can also look then at their pay rate. So if you've got a budget in mind and you're like, okay, it is what it is. I wish it was more. Or I'm fine with it being less or whatever the situation may be. 
you can look at them and know in advance, like, oh, okay, she's 225 per finished hour. Oh, okay, she's open to royalty share. Um, and should I explain those? Do you, are you guys familiar with? Yeah, okay. Yeah, do explain them. Sure. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to pay structure in narration, um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The primary way most narrators work and of course that's like you know there's a lot of different people a lot of different ways is per finished hour so let's say your book is two hours long then and let's say for argument's sake i am not five dollars per hour but just to keep the math they're very easy <laughs> if i'm five dollars per finished hour then you only pay for your finished two hours not for the hours it took me behind the scenes to do it so mm -hmm you would owe me ten dollars. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Um, because one finished hour of audio does take many more hours on the back end. It takes about mm -hmm. one finished hour is about an hour of prep, reading the book, taking notes, what have you. And then um two to three hours in the recording studio of, you know, getting it down. And then Three hours, maybe four again on editing, mastering, proofing, which is like correcting any mistakes where the narration does not exactly match the text. And then any changes the author may have. Name mispronunciation, which hopefully we dealt with in the beginning, but things happen. Um, you know, little moments of needing tone change, that kind of thing. Um, and so what does that come up to? One, three, four. It's like six or seven hours and like some can swing farther if you're like i've created a magical land where everybody's name is said once and they all have different pronunciations and you're like okay cool <laughs> that's him i'll i'll see you in 10 hours <laughs> or there's stuff where it's like we have two people trapped in an elevator you only have two character voices you're like cool i will see you in three hours <laughs> like so it does vary um but that's per finished hour. So I I do a bunch of whatever on the back end. You only pay for the hours of actual recorded runtime. Model number two is uh, royalty share. Basically exactly what it sounds like. And um, I think ACX's model is that there's the author gets, what is it, like 40 percent? And that the author is then agreeing to split that and get 20% and give 20% of the royalties to the narrator. Mm -hmm. And I know this is super appealing to new independent authors who are so interested in having an audiobook. Believe me, I get it. I love audiobooks. Um, but the hard part is sort of the push pull on that one is that my math skills are basic but solid. <laughs> and <laughs> I imagine a lot of authors have the same skills. And so if you are um, saying, like, I have this new book, I have never put a book out there yet, I really want someone to do royalty share with me, you're probably looking at a newbie narrator. Totally fine. I have been there. I have done royalty share books. I still do. But the royalty share projects I take look a little different now because when you get – I'd say I'm in the middle and there are guys on the high end who are getting like $400 per finished hour and they only receive royalty share as a favor from the author because the authors are so well established. It's well known that they'll receive more from the royalty share deal than they would with their per finished hour. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then in the middle where I'm sort of living, it's about break even. Like, I just had an author I'm working with on a rom-com book, and she messaged me a week ago, and she was like, how do you feel about switching from royalty share to per finished hour? And I'm like, doesn't matter to me, right? Like, I can see your pre-sales. I can see your past track record. I can see, you know what I mean, like, what your reach is on social. I've got a pretty good guess of what we'll do, and so it's really about even whatever suits you, let's do it. And then there's other ones where, like, I love the book. You're just asking a narrator to take a really big chance on this huge time investment. Um, and it's where I think newbie narrators and newbie authors have this perfect moment to just, again, with the kiss sound, sorry, listeners, 
they have this perfect moment to find each other and grow something really lovely together. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, there are plenty of new independent authors who are like, nope, I want to own my rights. I am going to blow up. I don't want to start piecemeal giving away my rights to any part of this project, which, again, I have worked with those authors. They are phenomenal. There's no there's no wrong answer. Um, And then there's hybrid as our third way to pay for narration, which is a little bit of both. So you get as a narrator. And again, you negotiate the terms of this per deal. But you would get as the narrator some amount of royalties and some amount of upfront chunk agreed upon based on the length of the book. So you might get like a third of your usual rate or half of your usual rate or two thirds of your usual rate. And the royalty you receive, the percentage would fluctuate based on how much um, upfront you got. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I've never, I've never heard of that model before. That's cool. Yeah. And like, there's, it's set, I can't remember what it is for ACX. ACX has a set one where the rate doesn't change, but the lump sum does. You can just pick. And then I think Find Away has one. I think it's set as well. I haven't done one, a royalty share with Find Away yet, or through mm-hmm. Find Away, I should say. Um, but that one, I want to say it's 50-50, but I don't know. And, of course, these things change, right? Like three years ago, ACX had a different um, a different contract. It's been updated and changed. Um, but, yeah, uh, any other foibles, any other problems people run into? Um, I just had a, a quick question. Yeah, of course. That, that third model, because I've heard of the, uh, the, um, right, the clip ping, uh, you know, straight up, the mm-hmm. in the shower, um, yes. and of course the royalties. And I, and I kind of heard the same thing that it was like uh, an audiobook narrator might choose to do royalties if it was like um, Jessica Biel or something. Like they're like, yeah. we know it's going to have like an audience, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Um, and so for that third model, now is that accepted by audio narrators right now? Is that less preferred, or is it kind of just the same level as the other two? Is it because it sounds kind of new? Um. I think it it really depends. Um, I think it's it's a way for both author and narrator to hedge their bet a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I'd say it's definitely the middle ground. It just depends so much on what in comparison to what your per finished hour would come out to be for you know a ten hour book. Is it likely the narrator will get made whole on this project at these rates? It's so hyper dependent on the book and you know what I mean, how it's received. And it's it's definitely negotiation. But I think one of the things that um, I can't say enough is how friendly and kind and warm and understanding the narrator community is. There is no question you can ask nicely and will be mad about it. Like, there isn't a single thing. you Like, it's not a problem. So, like, if you're an independent author and you're like, man, I don't know if I should ask for royalty share or if that's only going to attract newbie talent and I'm hoping for someone a little more established, just ask. Just message the narrator and be like, hey, here's what traction I have. I'm really interested in your narration here's roughly the kind of thing I could offer as far as like royalty share versus, you know, per finished hour or a a upfront payment. Is that, am I like in the right ballpark? Like people are so friendly. They will a hundred percent, hopefully write you back. And you know what I mean? Like no one's going to get offended. Um, And you can look up somewhere, uh, sag after there are a lot of narrators who are sag after and you can look up what the industry standard rate is because it just gives you an idea for like okay if a full-time voice actor is the kind of person who's going who i'm asking to do this work what what is that do you know what i mean like what by the way it's 250 per finish hour um so that just gives you a ballpark of when you hear like 
you like clutch your chest and like, oh, $175 per hour. Cause like, I know oh it, God. when people say it on those silly TikToks, they're like, do you want to read and get $700 an hour? And you're like, that's not how it works. Like, <laughs> that's not how it happens. Uh, I know TikTok. Um, <laughs> um, because there is, you know, a real amount of work behind it. And when you work out what someone's hourly rate, per finished hour rate is once you've broken down how long it took them to do it, it's way more normal feeling, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but again, everybody's rates are different. Just ask. And you can ask to um, have a different sample sent to you. You can even, if you'd feel like squeamish about saying like, hey, here's a chunk of text. Would you mind sending me an audition? You can just say, like, I love the samples you had on your website. My novel is a fantasy novel. Do you have an extra fantasy sample in your pocket you could send me? Or have you done any fantasy novels that are available on Audible where I could listen to the sample? Um, these are all fine questions. There's no wrong, really. As long as you're asking a question in good faith and um, in a professional way, there's there's no one who's going to, like, not be like, oh, cool, thanks so much for reaching out. Like, I, I've had authors do this. Like, reach out, whether it be on a platform like ACX or just via my email because they saw me out in the world somewhere. And they're like, hey, I'm thinking X, Y, Z. Have I found the right person? And half the time the answer is yes, let's read your book. And half the time I'm like, that's not where I am right now. But here's five ways to find other narrators or here's, you know, someone I think you might really use and enjoy. Like they're just good benchmarks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love that. I love how um, you're sharing how warm the community is, uh, but then also you yourself, you can, like, and you said this in the beginning, which was like, just, you have questions, just reach out. Yes. LizaJacob.com. Just yeah. come I think it's dot com. Am I VO dot com? Now we're going to like, oh, dear. Yeah, no, it's live at Jacob dot com. Um, come ask me questions. Um, and if you want help sifting through all of this, I am available for that. That is, I if I'm going to sit with someone for more than a few minutes, um, I do charge a rate for that. But I am happy, happy to do it. If you just are like, I have. 250 auditions on my desk and I don't know what to do. Like, I got you friends. I'm right there. Not to worry. Um, and then, you know, when you get working with your author, let's say you find someone or, or sorry, your, your narrator, you're the author and you find someone you're like, awesome. And I've given them the manuscript. You can ask, you can say like, Hey, do you want me more hands on or, hey, would you mind if I checked in on these characters before you did the first 15 minutes? Because oftentimes you will um, receive the first 15 minutes fully narrated. And it's a good checkpoint on like vibe check and voice check. But there's lots that happens in your novel after the first 15 minutes, right? Um, and so if you've got your male love interest or your female love interest or whoever, you're them, they, they aren't introduced until chapter seven. Let me know. You just, you want to hear Jaden's voice? Awesome. Let's nail it down. I've even done over Zoom because sometimes the email back and forth for samples is just like tedious and yeah. time consuming. And so I hit record on my Zoom and I'm like, all right, and I will just sit there and you know, he'll be like, I, I worked with someone for a fantasy novel. We're still finishing up. And um, he had this massive cast of voices, and they're so fun to do. But it's, on paper, some of their voices sound like stern, but warm. And then we kept on, like, they, there were a lot of very similar descriptions. So we just hopped on Zoom, and we nailed them out. And then, like, I can go back to that recording when I get to – Chandra's voice or whoever's voice or Ivy's voice. And I'm like, I listen back. And I'm like, okay, right. Yes. Good. Moving for, moving on. And I have the author right there on the zoom listening to the same thing. Um, 
I feel like I lost the thread. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, we were talking about, you know, how you can provide feedback. There's different ways that you can, um, you know, make sure the notes are coming through. I think that's brilliant going on Zoom and recording. And actually, that leads me to my next question. I have, mm-hmm. I have a lot of questions, but Good. I have <laughs> definitely. Um, I want to know, how do you tackle accents? You know, so you have a lot of accents. How do you even begin? Like, I, I that was fascinating to me. Training, 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 training. Um, the only times I will just like watch someone on YouTube for 15 minutes and go is if this is a person in the market and he has one line in the entire seven book series. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to listen to a Welsh person talk for 15 minutes and I'm going to give you my best shot on his two words and we're all going to move on. Um, but for everyone else, I think it's really important to, particularly when we're talking, this isn't wild sci-fi fantasy where I'm blending accents and this isn't real. If we're talking about French accents or, you know, a sub-Saharan accent, like these are real people from real places. And um, I feel, and I know all other, most other narrators feel, it's important to honor that. And so... There's a lot of different resources um, and because I really enjoy it. <laughs> I spend a lot of time on it. Um, but there's um, like training courses you can take online. And so, you know, you download the PDF and you download all the audio files and you do the practice and you record and listen back and you can get yourself through it. Um, but I've also worked, worked with a coach, which has been so much fun because then you really fine tune it. And the ones I list on my website are the ones where I have worked with my coach on this and she has listened to me back for hours. Sorry, Molly. <laughs> and, um, you know that you could really do, you know, if I'm your leading lady, then I can really do the leading male's voice in an Irish accent. In a certain part of Ireland, we have to study up if we traveled too far in the wrong direction. But like, you know. It's great because then I feel like that it's really sturdy. You can really ask me to do those. And I feel good about them. And um, it's not hard to switch because if you haven't really studied a character voice with the accent in it, and there's four people in our scene, and there's like a general American for, you know, Stacy, and Bob is from France, and Eric is from, I don't know, Canada, Good luck to you, man, if you're switching between accents and you haven't nailed them down. Um, But, yeah, so training definitely for accents. And, um, you know, there's I'm never going to say the accent the exact same way. Um, I'm never going to speak it the same way a native would. But that isn't actually the goal. My goal is to honor it, do my best. And it's really pretty good. And it. To you and I, you're like, ooh, that's an Irish accent. Unless you have Irish family, in which case I apologize. They will cringe. But, like, <laughs> that's the same. Like, I, um, it's funny. I had studied um, a specific part of an Alabama accent because I was like, oh, my mom can help me. Because she, uh, yeah, she moved when she was eight, but she, like, her family is from there. And I was like, awesome. And I was like, okay, mom, will you help me? And she, like, was, like, clutching her chest. She was like, Liza, no. And I'm like, okay, good note. Let me know where, right? Like, and it's just these tiny shifts in vowel sounds. And it's, you can see, I really enjoy this. I could nerd out about accents and dialects for a very, very, very long time. But, um, but it's fun. And I think it brings life to the book. You know what I mean? It brings a sense of sort of the world and the spatial awareness. And like um, the other ones that I think are really fun are accents where it's easy or needed to express um, either like a class, caste or regionality system within it. So like the difference between RP and Cockney. That's fun, right? Because on the page, you may or may not have written the text to be different. And if I can then know that from you, because you've told me, 
And I'm going to be like, okay, she's very fancy. And he is trying to be fancy, but he is not. And that is okay. <laughs> then we can, like, let some of his consonants slip. Do you know what I mean? And you just get to the, like, oh, oh, oh. And it adds dimension that you've already put in there as the author to the audio. And it just, that's the stuff where I feel like, yes, I am sneakily slipping into the background by only creating these characters in this place. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> because I mean, I feel like that's one of the things that writers we nerd out on, which is like sometimes maybe too much because we research, we research, and we're like this person's at that time at that place, and then sometimes we forget to actually go back to writing. <laughs> but, but um, I mean, that's that's like the, one of the most fun parts is it's like so juicy. It's so good. <laughs> exactly. Like this person's like alive. You know, we have all these things about them that you want to see, you want to hear. You know, hundred percent. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, and. It's what makes, like, backstory so fun. That's the other one. I've asked people, like, authors I have a longstanding relationship with. I'll be like, are we going to see this character again? Are they coming back? Can I have backstory? Do you have scenes that you wrote that didn't make it? Like, because that, that stuff gives you so much juice. And, like, I am very lucky in that my voice and my acting ability really align with a lot of the stuff I love to read. It's not that way for everybody, right? Like you might be a guy or a gal or whoever who's got like the voice for terrifying horror novels. Oh yeah. But you love a cozy mystery. Like that's <laughs> tough. And those people exist and you just find a way to craft a career that's best for everyone. It totally works out. And I certainly have read books I found challenging like mm -hmm. scary genuinely or deeply deeply guttingly sad mm -hmm. but for the most part i am a sort of chipper cheeky cheerful whimsical person and those are the books i read which is so pleasant and so i get very overexcited <laughs> about reading these books and finding out more about the characters and the backstory i'm like wait I think I almost annoyed the rom-com narrator because I was like, wait, it's a town in Pennsylvania, but like, how close are they to Philly? Is there a regional accent? Do they drive to the museums? And she's like, it's Philly, but not Philly. I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> it's Philly, <laughs> but not Philly. <laughs> it's not. It's not. And no. Um, but yeah, that's the stuff I find. I get a lot of enjoyment out of. So don't get me wrong, I love the character voices in the 15-minute checkpoint, or like for a lot of authors, I'll do like a character list if I feel like we've got a lot of big personalities or we've got a lot of big accents, you know what I mean? Um, real, that's like sci-fi, you need to hear all the people up front. Cozy mystery romance, we're aligned, probably, we're probably good to go. Um, but that's the stuff I love being offered. Um and other narrators may say, like, if I turn out to be wrong, let me know, but let me go through first. Mm. And that's okay, too. But they won't be offended that you offered it. They won't be mad or, do you know what I mean? Like, never be shy to just be like, I have these extra scenes or I have these character breakdowns. Because for a lot of us, the character breakdowns are the prep. You know what I mean? So, like, you want to give me better informed prep? Yes, please. Like, sounds good. And speaking of, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, um, when, in addition to what authors can provide, how can an author build a relationship with their their narrator? Because you mentioned that having those relationship with with the, the authors, and I say that you uh, you will also work with a one series, so obviously mm -hmm. have a long standing relationship there too. Yeah, what can authors do to build stronger relationships, or just from the bat, like have a great relationship with their narrator? Um. Open communication is excellent. Um, most of my communication is over email. Um, I do do phone calls and Zoom calls. Um, and in the beginning, I, I, th I think I still, yeah, I, I have yet to, almost everybody, I conduct an exit interview. And I'm like, hey, do you mind if 
you know, we chat for 15 minutes about how this went for you and, you know, how you're feeling about it and whatever else. And it's just another way for them to feel like they're tied into the process. And of course we have all of that on the front end, but, um, and I like, I love being hooked up via social. That's always cool. Um, cause then we can like cross post, which is fun. Um, and it's, it's mostly email communication about the process and listening to samples, occasional phone calls or zoom calls, just feeling like we are on the same page. You know what I mean? We are working on the same project together. Um, and you know, they trust me when I say like, cool, I'm going to take this and go back to the studio. I'll bring the audio files back to you when I'm ready. And they respect that. And I, you know what I mean? Like once I've said that, unless we have new data, more different things, let me work. I'll be back to you in four days. You know, uh, you'll get to hear them. We'll get to chat again. Um, and I feel like it's a pretty, it grows naturally for the most part. Um, but and repeat work, obviously, like for I have one author who I think I've been working with for like three years now. I'm like, she's awesome. She's got all of these like a series and they're just super fun to read. And I, I at this point, I must be <laughs> a good fit for the series. We're on book like seven and eight. Like, it's just a lot of fun. And um, I really enjoy her characters and I really enjoy the story. Um but yeah, I think the relationship building is just based on those like shared love and interest on creating this new piece of the project. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, thank you so much, Liza. That was that was great. Um, I yeah. think we're at about time. So, before- oh my goodness, that went so fast. <laughs> I know. This is, there was so much great information, and actually, I had additional questions, but um, it, maybe we can just meet up again and yes. dive more into this. That'd be awesome. I would um, love that. Awesome. Um, so where can people find you, of course, and, and contact you? Yeah, um, probably the easiest way is to find me at my website. There's a contact form, and I think my email is also listed there. The website is Liza Jacob, L-I-Z-A-J-A-C-O-B dot com. And my email is Liza Jacob and then the letters V-O at gmail dot com. So awesome. I'm on social, but I'm very, very bad at returning messages on social. I feel bad about that. <laughs> Me too. Me too. It's, it's a thing. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Liza Jacob. This has been awesome. I'm looking thank forward. you hearing more from you you're amazing um, and we're super happy to have you on the show well thank you so much Masia. this was so much fun and hopefully we'll talk soon awesome i'm, I'm looking forward to it thanks And that's a wrap for today's episode of the How to Write a Book podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you want to keep up with me and my work, check out the website, blackheartedstudios.com. That's www.blackheartedstudios.com. And follow me on Instagram, at Masiel Writes. That's at M-A-S-S-I-E-L Writes. As a book coach and publisher, I'm passionate about helping aspiring authors bring their stories to life. So if you've been dreaming of writing a book and don't know where to start, head to my website and let's chat. You get a free 30 minutes on me. Thanks again for listening. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.